So welcome everybody to this latest video on 160 Matt and in this video we'll be going over probability with a focus on some sample space diagrams. Now we'll be going through some common exam style questions which a copy of the questions is in the description below for you to download to have an attempt at before watching near the end of this video and going through the answers. Now a sample space diagram is a way of listing and representing all possible outcomes when combining two events. Now this is usually in the form of a table, it resembles like what we call a two-way table. Now once completed we can then use the diagram to find the probability of combined outcomes much more easily. So going straight into an example, let's have a look at this question. So it says Jamie has two fair spinners. One has three equal sections colored red, blue and yellow. And the other has four equal sections numbered one, two, three and four. And it says Jamie spins both spinners, complete the span, uh, sample space diagram. Now what you want to try and do is do this in a more systematic order rather than a random order where you're just picking one color and then picking one number and then just trying to make sure you've got all the possible outcomes because that's the main purpose of this particular question is making sure that you've listed all possible outcomes with no duplications so here if we start off with blue now again the pe the color of the pen i'm using is not going to make a massive difference so here i'm going to use keep one the same and change the other spinner so here i'm going to keep blue i've got blue one so i'm going to have blue two i can also have blue three and blue four now that uses all the possible blue options so then i move on to the next color so let's move on to red so i could have red one red two red three and red four and then move on to the last color which is yellow so i could yellow one yellow two yellow three and just squeezing in yellow four so all in all i've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so twelve possible outcomes now there's one way of working out the total number of outcomes and quickly without actually having to do a sample space diagram and that is by looking at the total number of outcomes in our first spinner which is three then looking at the total number of outcomes in our second spinner, which is four, and then just simply multiplying them. So if I do three times four, I get 12. So that's how many different combinations I should have. So moving on to question two, it says that a red dice and a blue dice are thrown together and the total of the two scores is found. The red dice is numbered one to six and the blue dice numbered one, two, three, three, five and eight. So question A is asking us to complete the, set, the sample space diagram. So here what we want to do first is make sure that we are labeling these according to the information that's given to is in, in the question. So the red die has got one to six, so that's one, two, three, four five six and then the blue die has got the following numbers so one two three three five and eight and what we've then got to do is add the numbers so we've got two three four five six seven and then three four five six seven eight then four and then that's going to be five six seven eight nine and then that's going to be the same and then six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then finally nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So for question B, all we then need to ask is which are the which are the most likely schools? So which number in green appears the most? And having a look at that, I would say that the answer is going to be six and seven. Then the reverse of that question is which schools are least likely? So which numbers appear the least amount and I would say that's going to be 2, 12, 13 and 14. And then for D it then says find the probability that a total score is less than 9. So then if you then count how many are less than 9, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So it's going to be 25 out of 36 and you can see how by answering those questions were a whole lot easier after drawing the sample space diagram so then moving on to question three it says uh, that a fair die and a coin are thrown together using a sample space diagram work out as mi how many possible outcomes are there so here I've actually got to draw the table myself so here I'm gonna have my coin in which I could have a head or a tail and then I've got my die, which is one, two, 
three, four, five, and six. So then if I just turn that into a table, and obviously encouraging the use of a ruler would be preferable. And then all I then need to do is just fill it in. So I'm gonna go for H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, and T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, and T6. Then question then says, work out the probability of getting an even number and a tail. So an even number of tail is one there, one there, and one there. So here for part B, it's gonna be how many are circled? That's gonna be three over how many have I got in total well that's going to be 2 times 6 which is 12 and then from 3 over 12 I can simplify that to give me 1 over 4. So now let's have a look at some past exam questions related to sample space diagrams. Now if you want a copy of these questions then there is a link in the description below for you to download and have an attempt at before working through the answers by continuing watching. So question one it says that in a game two fair spinners are spun so we've got spinner A and spinner B. It says if the numbers of the arrows land on different uh, are different rather the score is the higher number and if the number on the arrows land on the same then the score is zero. So what we need to do here is complete the table. Now typically when you look at this question you automatically think you've just got to add the numbers or multiply so it's really really important that you do read the questions because they are trying to vary these questions over what you typically expect in a sample space diagram. So looking at this then so reading the information what I've got to go for which number is bigger and if they're the same it's a zero. So the only zero that's been done and the only numbers that are left that are the same has already been marked so I've just got to go for the bigger number so this is going to be two, three and five. This one's going to be, oh no, we have got a zero, so there's a zero, and then we've got three and five. Then we've got four, 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 and five, and then six, 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 and six. So then the next question then says, write down the probability that the score is an odd number. So that if I then just highlight all the odd numbers, so I've got one there, one there, so that's going to be, and then we've got the fives. So then that there is going to be 5 out of 16. Then moving on to question C, it says the same game is played using spinners C and D. The table shows the sum of the possible scores and what we've got to do is we've got to write down the numbers on spinner D. So looking at this one, so if one loses out to four, then this number has got to be four. If this number here is a zero, then that needs to be the same. So that's going to be a four. Here we're looking for zero, so that's going to be a seven. And this number, if the highest number out of seven is going to be eight, then this number needs to be eight. And there we've done it. So then we can then fill in the rest. So then um, I don't think there's any essential need to fill in the rest of the numbers on the spinner, um, but we can do it anyway. So from this, then we can just write four, four, seven, and eight. So moving on to question two, it says here are five cards and we've got 17, 12, 23, 15 and 16. It says two of the five cards are picked at random. Work out the probability that the number of the two numbers is more than 30. Now there's no indication in this question that I need to draw a sample space diagram, but I'm going to do one anyway because I'm looking at two, a combination of two possible events. So here if I just write 17, 12, 23, 15 and 16, and then I've got 17, 12, 23, 15, and 16. And let's just turn that into a sample space diagram. Now I can't have the same card, so because once one card is picked, it then doesn't get back in the pan. So I'm going to leave to block those out. So what I've then got is five times five, take away five. So I'm looking at 20 possible outcomes which is always good to have. So if you didn't draw a table, then that's how many you are looking for. So the next thing I've then got to do is just simply add those numbers up, which again is not essential, but again, just may help the process of this. So then I've got 29, 40, 32, 33, and then 35, 27, 28, and then 38, 39, and 31. And then in this little triangle here, I've got 29, at 40, 35, 32, 27, and 38, and on the bottom row, 33, 28, 39, 
and 31. Now again, I'm looking for how many are more than 30. So I've got this one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So it's going to be fourteen over twenty, which gives me seven over ten. Now moving on to question three, it says in a game, players roll two ordinary fair six-sided dice. The number rolled, uh, the numbers rolled are added to get a score. Complete the table of possible scores. So all you need to do is just add the numbers up. And as you can see, for time purposes, they have completed most of them. So I've just got to write down a few, uh, which is why it's only worth one mark. And we've done so. Next question then is which is the most likely score? So which number appears the most? And I would say that's going to be seven, uh, as we've got six of them, so it's going to be seven. It says, says to win a prize, you must score eight. Work out the probability of winning a prize. So basically, how many eights have we got? Well, we've got one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to be five out of a total of 36, which doesn't simplify. So the answer then is five over 36. Then moving on to question four, it says here are two sets of cards and it says one card is chosen at random from each set and the numbers on the cards are added to give a score. And again, question A is asking us to complete the table to show the possible scores. So here I just need to add the numbers up. So I've got five, seven and nine and eleven. And then here I've got five, seven and nine. And then here I've got five and seven, and on the final row, seven, nine, eleven, and thirteen. Then for part B, it says work out the probability that the score is even. So I just want to highlight all the even numbers, and you can see that we've got absolutely no even numbers, uh, surprisingly. So that then is going to be a zero. And then the question says, what is the probability that the score is not a square number? So just need to highlight which are not square numbers so the only square numbers we've got are nines and one so then how many are not square well that's going to be one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so it's going to be twelve out of sixteen which simplifies so divide both by four as three quarters Question five then says, in a game, players spin two wheels. The wheels are fair. The numbers are added to get a score. So again, the wheels show a score of four and eight, then it equals 12. Uh, you may use the grid to help you answer these questions. So one thing you may want to do is add them all up. So here we've got, again, this could be very time consuming, uh, but we've got, let's say, two minutes to get this done. So we're just adding, so it's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And gen again, so you might get in autopilot mode, so it's just worth mention working there, just checking to see if all the numbers are going up by one. So they are, so I've just got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then six, seven, eight, nine. and eight ten and there we go now the question then says what is the most likely score and as you can see from the table it's going to be nine and then for question B, it says to work at uh, the score of 2, 3, 15 and 16 to win a prize, work out the probability of winning a prize. So we're looking for 2, 3, 15 and 16. So how many 2s, 3s and 15s have we got? Well, let's just highlight that. So I've got 1, 2, um, 3. And so there are my two, all my 2s and 3s. So the next one's just the 15s and 16s. So I've got six out of, and it's going to be eight times eight, which is 64. So it's going to be six over 64. And then we can simplify this uh, by dividing by two. So I've got three over 32, and that does not simplify. So I can just leave that as my final answer.
So moving on to question six, it says here these 20 discs are in a bag. It says two of the discs are taken at random from the bag. Work out the probability that the first disc has a smaller number than the second disc. So drawing a two-way table. Now it's not impossible for you to do this without a, pro a sample space diagram, but I'm just going to show you how we can use this to make this question a little bit easier for us to understand. So here I've got 11, 22, 33, and 44. And then I've got 11, 22, 33 and 44 so I'm looking for the first die so if I imagine that this represents the row represents first and the column represents second so here I'm looking for where the first one is smaller than the second so that's not going to be the case uh, that's not going to be the case that's not going to be the case and that's not going to be the case this one is that one isn't that one isn't and that one isn't and this one yes it is yes it is no because it's the same no yes yes and yes and no so i've got six possible combinations so looking at the probabilities of each of those i'm going to have 11 and 22 is my first one so 11 and 22 so picking 11 first is going to be 4 out of 20 and then 22 well i've only got 19 left because i've already picked one of them and how many 22s have i've got well i've got six so that's going to give me 24 over and then 20 times 19 which is 380. then for the second one i'm going to go for 33 uh, sorry 11 and 33 so 11 and 33 so then 11 is going to be again 4 over 20 and then out of 33 well i've got seven of those and i've got 19 to pick from so that's 28 over 380. then in the next one i've got 22 first and then 33. so 22 well there's six over 20 times and then how many 33s are there well there's seven so it's seven over 19 and that gives me 42 over 380. and then the next tick we've got is 11 and 44 and that is 4 over 380 times and then it's going to be 3 over 19 which is 12 over I don't know why I've put 380 there that's going to be presumptuous so that should be a 20 and that should be 380 and the next one I've got 22 and 44 so that's going to be 6 over 20 times uh, 3 over 19 which is 18 over 380 and then finally I've got 33 and 44 which is uh, going to be 7 over 20 times and then it's going to be 3 over 19 which is 21 over 380 and the next thing I then need to do is just simply add these probabilities together so I'm adding these together now if i add all of those up now notice that they're all over 380 so the answer is going to be all the numerators added together so 24 plus 28 plus 42 plus 12 plus 18 plus 21 all over 380 and that is an 8 so then if i just simply type that all up into my calculator or again if it was on non-calculator i don't think this one is to be honest um let's have a look what we should have so we should have 145 over 380 which I believe does simplify to give me 29 over 76 and there is my final answer